Engineering is an old profession. From the dawn of history, people have been using numbers to perform feats that might not always seem impossible. Aristotle is said to have lifted an entire ship out of a harbour by himself using only pulleys and ropes. We put people on the moon and the bottom of the ocean. We've got tiny balls of electricity running through wires to put video on your screen. At the end of the day, it's all just a maths problem, isn't it? Today, we'd like to delve a bit into the history of engineering, specifically the murky history of it all. The past is full of moments with gaps in the historic record and engineering is no exception. We got buildings, contraptions, and even as you'll soon see, sounds that defy explanation. These are some unsolved ancient engineering mysteries. Starting off our list, we have the Baghdad Battery. All right, so in 1936, an Austrian archaeologist named Wilhelm Koenig was evacuating a site in Kujid Rabu, a village just outside of Baghdad in Iraq. There, in an old grave covered by a stone slab, he discovered a set of three artifacts, a clay pot six inches tall, a hollow copper cylinder, and a single iron rod. These artifacts fit together with the rod going into the copper cylinder and the cylinder going into the jar. Koenig was intrigued by this and speculated that the object was an ancient prototype of a battery, a so-called galvanic cell, capable of holding an electrical charge when all put together, along with an acidic agent like wine or vinegar. The fact that the iron appeared to be corroded into indicating such a liquid was present seemed to support that claim. Koenig hypothesized that the purpose of such a battery was electroplating gold onto silver objects. Now, this hypothesis is near universally rejected for a number of reasons. Firstly, Koenig made a number of claims that didn't line up, such as saying that the artifacts were from the Parthian Empire, or even though the style of the pottery was from the later Sassanid Persian Empire. Second, when the pieces are all together, there's no way to connect them to complete the electrical circuit, making it pretty useless as a battery. And third, even if it was possible to use them to electroplate gold and silver, there are no known electroplated objects that have been found in the same time to support the hypothesis. We'd love to tell you about Koenig's claims in his own words, but the only link to his 1938 study that we could find was deleted for copyright infringement, apparently. He did write a book, but it's pretty obscure and it's all in German. So yeah, his theory was almost definitely wrong, so you might be asking, well, why are we including it and what was this actually used for, Simon? Currently, the tentative explanation is that the objects were used to store scrolls, which were then buried with someone when they died, perhaps a priest. It's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Considering the jars were found in an old grave along with several hundred beads and other artifacts, this seems rather plausible. Nevertheless, there's still a bit of intrigue here. The TV show Mythbusters actually did an episode testing the Baghdad battery, making recreations of it to see if it could actually produce an electric charge. And it turns out, yeah. It could. It's still almost certain that whoever created it didn't know this and couldn't use it for anything practical, meaning that whoever created the Baghdad battery discovered batteries by accident. Massive coincidence or not, that's something you just don't see very often. In 1900, a Roman-era shipwreck was discovered by sponge divers off the coasts of the Greek island of Antikythera. The Greek navy proceeded to explore the wreck, recovering various artifacts such as coins, statues, and more dating back over 2,000 years. One of those artifacts was a worn-down hunk of corroded bronze, considerably ravaged by the passage of time. At first, the artifact was ignored in favor of the statues and coins, which were easier to decipher, and so it was placed in storage for over a year. But when they got around to examining, it was revealed that there was more to this lump of waterlogged rust that had first met the eye. The Antikythera mechanism is an ancient clockwork device, i.e. one powered by gears. Specifically, it's an orrery, a mechanical model of the solar system that helps to predict the positions of the planets and the moons decades in advance. It could tell you the phases of the moon and even predict when eclipses would happen. It's like that one in that episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. You put in a date and it spits out the result. In short, it's kind of a computer, a 2,000-year-old analog computer, which is pretty cool. The original artifact is rather degraded, making it hard to decipher just by looking at it. It also doesn't help that it's in several pieces from sitting on the bottom of the ocean for two millennia. But just like the person who created this device, we have technology. Using various advanced methods, including X-ray imaging, researchers have managed to recreate what the device would have probably looked like and how it worked. The device is currently believed to have consisted of 37 bronze gears, precisely measured to follow the movements of both the sun and the moon, even through the moon's irregular orbits. There's 
some speculation that the device also had an additional segment for decoding the movements of the planets as well Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The other planets weren't known about yet, so they weren't included, obviously. The mechanism itself was quite complex. There was a dial for setting the date, and the whole machine was powered by a hand crank, which would turn a gear linked to the front dial. To set the year, one used two scales, one with 365 days and 12 months, and the other with 360 days and 12 zodiac signs. It had 360 because the old calendar used in the mechanism had 12 months with 30 days each, with five days left over. To be honest, it sounds like a much better system than the one we use today. Imagine not having to remember which months have 31 days. That would be handy for children. If you needed to clarify a date or year, the device also included a handy built-in calendar on the back side. So, set the wheels, turn it around to make sure, and you're good to go. There's even separate dials to account for leap years. Not automatically, though, as amazing as that would have been, but they are still there. So, now the big question is, what's the story? Who made it? Where? Why? and how? Now, these are all good questions, and they have some tentative answers. There's no definitive answer as to the creators, except that they were probably Greek scientists who were well-versed in astronomy. The device was found off an island in southern Greece, but its place of origin could variously be Rhodes, Corinth, northwestern Greece, or even a Greek colony in Sicily. Aside from that, the rest of the story is a bit shrouded in mystery. The research, however, is far from complete, and it's possible more of the puzzle will come together over time. Experts are continuing to dive in the underwater spot where there are device was originally found, hoping to discover more clues to its origins. Soon, perhaps, we'll have more answers, and we'll be sure to keep you updated. The last entry we have in the video today is a bit unusual. Now, bear with us as we go to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the home of the Mayan civilization. The Maya were a sophisticated culture, having a comprehensive understanding of astronomy, architecture, and many mathematical concepts. One of the great Mayan cities was Chichen Itza. It was one of the largest pre-Columbian cities in Mesoamerica, and is today the site of many old Mayan monuments. One of these monuments is the Temple of Cucalán, variously known as El Castillo, La Pyramide, or just Cucalán. It's a step pyramid built between the 8th and 12th century. Not particularly ancient, but, you know, old all the same. The pyramid was a temple dedicated to the Mayan deity of, well, to the Aztec god of Quetzalcoatl. But it's not so much the construction of the pyramid that intrigues. Rather, there's some ancillary things that pique one's interest. To start with, during the spring and autumn equinoxes, the sun flares off one side of the pyramid, casting shadows that appear to resemble snakes crawling down the side of the temple. Now, you might wonder, was that done on purpose? The Mayans were known to construct temples or parts of them deliberately aligned or oriented based on celestial events. So it's possible, although again, it could just be a coincidence. However, there is another aspect of the pyramid that catches people's eyes, or rather, ears. So you see, if you're standing in front of the pyramid and you clap your hands, the sound travels back to you, sounding rather like the chirping of a bird, or quetzal to be specific. The technical explanation is that the sound waves travel up the side of the pyramid, each one returning to the listener at a later time as it bounces off the limestone steps. Because the waves travel at an angle, and because of maths, the latter echoes decline in frequency, creating a chirping sound. An interesting effect to be sure, but some researchers have argued that this characteristic is not accidental, and that the temple temple was built specifically to scatter and reflect sound waves in such a way to mimic the sound of a native bird. Such a claim is naturally difficult to prove, but if the Mayans worked out astronomy, it is possible they could work out sound waves in architecture too, and they certainly had attention to detail when it came to buildings. Again, this could just be a massive coincidence, but who's to say? So if you enjoyed this video, please do also check out another video we've done about archaeological mysteries. I'm going to link to it on the screen now. You'll enjoy that one, and thanks for watching. Now, just before you leave today's video, let me tell you about another channel that I run called Decoding the Unknown. It's a show where I take a deep dive in some of the world's biggest mysteries, from what happened to the Roanoke colonists to the regular guy who found a listening device in one of his power strips. It's always a bit of a wild ride. You can find a link to Decoding the Unknown below, or just search Decoding the Unknown in YouTube and you will find it.